guess what? What? It is I, Rubex. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Rubex. Welcome to the party. Wanted to share with you something cool that came across my radar today. This is a game called Nine Lives. It is a JRPG slash RPG. Now, a couple cool things about this right off the bat. The first is this game is made by two guys essentially. A very, very small team. Secondly, this is alpha, but it's open alpha. It's an alpha that anyone can play and download. It's very easy to do, and anyone can jump in and play. You don't have to sign up and wait for a magical invite. You can jump into this game right away and check it out. From what I've seen in terms of some of the gameplay, it's actually pretty damn impressive. So in my opinion, I think it might be worth checking out. I don't know the total amount of classes they're going to be at. I think it might be four. It looks like we have a blade, uh, obviously a warrior class, a mage class, a ranger class, and there could be s some more here as well. Obviously there's different races to choose from, but I'm kind of liking this lady. Her hair just... I feel like she's a real-life mage with that hair. Very electrical. Anyways, we're going to jump in and kind of check it out. This is my first impressions of Nine Lives. As always, all the information to download the game is going to be below this video in the description. Let's get started. Alright, we are officially in the game. I am playing a mage class. It looks like I have one or two spells on the bottom here. Let's just quickly go over some of the options, some of the GUI. Maybe get... yeah, there we go. Make that a little bit bigger. That's cool that you can size that. Let's get this set up before we really begin to move around the game. But I, I do want to talk about this game and some of their, some of their goals for the game. They laid out pretty nice on the website. Again, I will be posting all that information below this video in the description. But anyways, let's talk about Nine Lives. Nine Lives is an open world online RPG focused on freely searching and adventuring in a unique world and building characters with items and skills. They aim to create a game where players can enjoy the pleasure of simple RPGs such as discovering, collecting, battling in their own relaxed pace. This game is, again, created by a two-man indie team. They're called Smoky Monkey with an S, so Smoky Monkeys, I'm guessing. Uh, the game creation is still in process, and obviously the world is expanding. Now, one of the big things in Nine Lives is no levels. There's no levels and no limits, basically, so there's really not a concept of a level. You can obviously gain experience, and you can use that experience when you kill monsters to eventually purchase spells and skills. They also say that there's no limits such as places you can't go, enemies you can't defeat, or items you can't use because of your level. You can go wherever you want, whenever you want. You can go on search uh, of numerous secret paths, hidden places, or dangerous caves, as much as you like, in areas with unique regionality. Dungeons or habitat range of creatures will randomly change every time you play, making your adventure exciting in full variety. This game isn't essentially quest-driven. Granted, there's a lot of quests in the game, but they're not going to make it your priority. Uh, they say a variety of quests exist in the game world, but most of them do not affect the progress of the game, even if you don't complete them. All of the quests can be redone if you miss them, and even if you accidentally sell or throw away a quest item, you can get it again as many times as you like. This game's quest will give you clues about the world, but will not limit your adventure. Play to enjoy your own adventure, they say. With regards to items, not only are there weapons and armor to protect yourself, but there are also all kinds of items hidden, such as mounting animals, pets, mysterious mushrooms, raptor's eggs, ink of a giant squid. Uh, weapons and armors have random stats, and there are infinite types. Also, there's rare items, called rare or epic, that exist as well in this world. You can also create a variety of items by crafting using regionally specific collectibles. You can gather them in those regions while traveling around the world. 
Items will not only increase your chance of survival, but they will make you probably more prosperous and powerful, definitely depending on what you're going to be adding. So, again, rare items and epic items are in this game, as well as weapons and armor and crafting materials. Now, going into the skill tree, as the player character grows, you will become able to choose unique performance skills from a variety of choices. Skills can be acquired in stages according to the plan worked out by yourself at any time. You can also reset the already acquired skills and rebuild the skill tree if needed. Creatures will try to kill the player character using their unique skills as well. There's something in this game called the path. Let's talk about it. Through the path, the adventurous journey of a player can be checked in small categories. You can check usual data and rankings, such as XP you've earned, how many creatures you've killed, but various rankings include unusual titles, such as Alchemist, Immortal, King of Mountains, Botanic Doctor, and Pet Collector provided as well. In addition, you can also participate in limited time events with prizes or limited events hosted by players through the path. You can do more than just compete with other players on character strength or playing hours. Each player can choose their way that fits their playing style. That is the path. Some more information about that on the website. They also have something on the site called Roadmap, and this is obviously a game under development. This is Alpha, but Roadmap kind of got me excited because it basically lays out what they are going to add in this game, and some of the stuff they're going to add is going to be pretty cool. The biggest thing for me, which is the last on their list, it looks like, but it's definitely going to be something that excites me, is going to be the multiplayer modes. They're going to implement multiplayer modes, including scenario based on special maps. Cooperative play is going to be implemented as well. And for me, the exciting thing is going to be competitive play. They're going to have competitive play against other players, which means there's going to be some sort of PvP implemented in this game later on. So with regards to that, let's hope that there is going to be a large amount of players that can play in any given server, and let's hope that there's going to be some sort of looting system. When you kill a player, hopefully you can loot them partially or fully in this game. They're also opening new areas. Right now, there's only two zones that we have, I believe, in this map for the alpha. They're going to be expanding. I think when this game is complete, the entire world is going to be like nine or ten zones. They plan on adding character titles, adding dungeons, expanding areas. They plan on adding elite creatures as well and elite creature abilities. They have new quests and events they're going to be implementing as well, new items. I think they have already seven languages in this game, but they're going to be adding more languages as well. Anyways, enough of that rambling. Sorry guys, let's get to the actual gameplay. I've been kind of running around this town or city and kind of picking up quests and figuring out as well there's going to be certain vendors and people you can trade with, buy stuff from. Obviously there's armor smiths. It looks like there was a bank. Okay, and this as well. Pretty cool. I think before we uh, finish this video, let's run to a different zone and maybe check it out. I do believe there's going to be different cities to explore. This is a pretty big open world map from what I've seen so far. And from my understanding, there's a lot of secret shit in this game, like caves, dungeons, and just treasure that's hidden in the game world, in and around the game world. So exploring is obviously what the dev team wanted us to do in the first place, and they're giving us content and options for that. So let's start to explore, I guess. I mean, the, the town is cool, but we can come back here. Just to know, two things of importance. First, my hair is amazing. Uh, second, we're about to go into some sort of portal. I don't know if this is a dungeon, or maybe this takes us to a different zone. Cool, definitely a different zone. We haven't really explored any of it, so that's awesome. I do have a feeling, though, I'm probably not... I don't want to say high enough level, because there's no levels in this game, but I don't think I have the necessary skills to probably attack some of the mobs in this zone, but who knows? Let's try it and see what happens. That guy kind of looks scary. Maybe we'll... Maybe we shouldn't attack. I mean, I guess there's really no harm in it. You know what? I'm going to go over here. There's... Uh, There's an animal that looks maybe less... Oh, here we go, let's try this. And this is a good way to test, uh, again, the strength of mobs. When you go to a new zone, throw some magic at it or attack it and see what happens. See how quickly their health drops. Oh, jeez. Right, okay. Definitely not going to fight this guy. Uh, the good thing is they do kind of leave you after you run for a minute here, so surprisingly didn't, uh, didn't die from that. 
I do see a town in the distance or something like that. We'll have to check this out here. Again, pretty impressive graphics. It's very smooth as well on my end. I am recording at like 50 FPS. I'm pretty sure the devs are using Unity for the game here. But again, pretty impressive graphics. Pretty smooth on my end for the most part. Just remember, two guys made this game. This, this looks like a game that has been made by a team of people. This was created by two dudes, basically. It's very small dev team. Pretty impressive, to say the least, with what they have already in this alpha. It's actually pretty damn polished. The gameplay itself is pretty smooth, but the combat is, is fine. It's nothing spectacular, but then again, we are an early alpha with this game here. Personally, for me, I would prefer a skill-based system where it's more action combat. You can miss your targets. This is definitely more tab target oriented in terms of the combat system, where basically you lock onto a target and you fire. You don't have to actually aim, but that doesn't negate from the fact this game is actually pretty awesome already. And again, tab target's not the end of the world, especially for the fact that this system is not based on levels, it's based on your skills and abilities. So again, the more you play, you will be able to level up your skills, and different skills will have different effects. I'm guessing certain armors are going to have elemental protections as well, or possibly protections from arrows, different types of arrows, piercing, and possibly with, with melee, maybe there's different armors that have protections against that. Who knows? I guess we'll see what happens. But then again, we are in early alpha, and I'm sure there's going to be changes. At the end of the day, it's not that bad, and I think it's still going to be a lot of fun to eventually skill up and, you know, again, for me at least, fighting other players is going to be pretty important. But for the most part, right now, if you are just into the single player elements, you can definitely roam around this world and uh, skill up your, your character in this game. Completely free, made by two guys. There's a lot of content already, so definitely worth checking out. Hopefully this game does appeal to you. If it does, check the links below. You can download this game for free and jump in and play. I would love your thoughts and comments. Please post them below this video. As always, highly appreciate your time, guys, and I'll see you soon. Peace.